Hi, I'm Betty. Welcome to my kitchen. One of my vices is playing Mahjong, a game I dearly love. And uh, we normally just bring a sandwich for lunch, but when it's one of the members of the group's birthday, we celebrate and everybody brings something. The other day, it was my dear friend Ellie's birthday, and to celebrate, I made a quiche. So that's the recipe I'm going to share with you today, quiche Lorraine. We're going to start with the crust, and this is one occasion I have no qualms about using a commercial pie crust. Just unroll it and I'm going to stretch it out just a bit so that it'll fit nicely into my quiche pan. Just a few swipes with the rolling pin is all you need. I think that'll do it. Now to get it in the pan all I'm going to do is roll it back up on the pin and this is my quiche pan. If you don't have one of these, certainly you can make it in, in a plain uh, pie pan. That will work just beautifully. And then we're going to ease it down. Just gently ease it down. Try to make sure there's no air in there. And fix it to the side. It's fine if it extends just a little above because it may shrink slightly while you're baking. And you're going to bake it in a preheated 450 degree oven for about 10 minutes or so, 10 to 12 minutes depending on your oven. There we are. I'm going to trim the edges slightly with a scissor. Not quite to the edge, just leave a little, oh, perhaps a quarter inch or so hanging above the rim. The noise you hear in the background is the fan from the oven, which as I said is preheated to 450 degrees. I'll just neaten this up a little bit. Make sure those edges are firmly pressed in. And now I go to prick the bottom with a fork, just lightly. This procedure is called docking. Ten minutes are up and my pie crust is partially baked and just starting to brown. Now I'll let it cool while we prepare the rest of the ingredients for the quiche. So here are the ingredients for the filling for our quiche. I have six ounces of Swiss cheese, which I'm going to grate. I have a good sized onion, which is sliced uh, about, I would say, a quarter inch thick. I have two whole eggs and two egg yolks. I have two cups of heavy cream and I have here um, a, a nutmeg which as you can see has been partially used and I'll be grating a little bit of that into the mixture at the end. Now I have here the two egg whites. Don't discard those. You can pop them into a jar and freeze them and use them for making uh, meringues or anything else you'd like, an egg white omelet. Uh, definitely don't waste them. They freeze beautifully. All right, so on the stove, I have cooking four slices of bacon. And let's go over to the stove. The bacon is cooked until quite crisp. I'm just gonna remove that to some paper towels to drain. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to take my sliced onion and just add it to the bacon fat. And I'm going to cook this. It doesn't need to be browned. It just needs to be nicely softened. And just get all of that onion in there. And we're just going to let that cook for a few minutes. While the onion is cooking, I'll prepare the rest of the ingredients. I've got six ounces of cheese, and I'm just going to break that quickly in the processor. I can just turn that out onto my board here. And without washing the bowl, put it right back on, fit it with the blade attachment. We're going to add the eggs and the cream. And we just need to give that a whirl to combine it. Okay, that is all ready now. All we're going to do now is wait for our onions to be cooked. The bacon has cooled enough that I can just tear it into pieces with my fingers. And this too will be all ready to pop in to the quiche shell. The onions have softened and I'm just going to let them drip off a little bit before we put them into our quiche. First I'm going to start by layering in these onions. Now I do like a lot of onion in quiche. If, you, if you're not as big a fan of onion, by all means use less just want to get an even layer. And next I'm going to add our crumbled bacon. And distribute it fairly evenly so that everybody gets a little bit of everything in, the, in their slice of the quiche. Now we'll add the cheese. Very often, your hands are your best tool. Just dust those off. And now we'll add the egg and cream mixture. Pour that evenly over. Now one side of my crust did collapse a little, so I want to be careful not to overfill this to where it's going to leak underneath, which means I'm not going to use quite all of that filling. And that is a very common occurrence when you're doing something like this. And the very last thing I'm going to do is grate a little bit of nutmeg over the top. I haven't added any salt because the salt from the bacon and the um, cheese is more than enough. I still have my oven at 450 degrees and this is going to go in for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I will lower it to 350 degrees for a further 15 minutes or until the custard looks set. And there it goes. minutes have passed. I had lowered the temperature from 450 to 350 at the 15 minute mark and my quiche is beautifully done. You can always check by shaking it. If it doesn't jiggle, your custard is set and ready to go. 
I'm just going to place it on my cooling rack. You need to let this settle for about 15 minutes before cutting it. And you can get eight nice uh, slices out of this. Uh, now this is quiche Lorraine with the traditional onion, bacon, and cheese filling. But you can pretty much make these with anything you have on hand. Broccoli and cheddar is a good combination. I made one the other day with smoked salmon, some grated cheese, and some beautiful fresh asparagus. You can certainly make all vegetables with pretty much whatever you have in your refrigerator. So put your creative juices to work and enjoy a lovely quiche. For further information and even more recipes, please visit my website.